Well, thank you very much, Jaime, for your presentation and very exciting news for our businesses in the uh, services sector. Um, I want to follow, focus our short follow-up discussion on the Asia-Pacific region today. Uh, we have seen the services sector increase its share of GDP uh, to beyond 50%. Uh, this has been particularly so with the development of technologies that enabled and facilitated new modes of service supply. Uh, over the past two years as well, we, the pandemic has seen ICT and logistics services gain increased importance as people and businesses rely increasingly on virtual interactions, digital communications and deliveries. Uh, the good news is that the regulatory environment in Asia Pacific has become more trade facilitative in, in recent years. Um, based on the OECD Services Trade Restrictiveness Index, the APEC average uh, has improved from 2014 when it was lower than the OECD average to 20% higher than OECD average now. Um, to 2018, uh, APEC non-binding principles for domestic regulation of the services sector initiative have played a big part in this by establishing a set of core transparency principles uh, that's influenced both domestic regulatory reform and negotiation process uh, in the Asia Pacific region. So the former has resulted in greater convergence in, in domestic uh, regulation rulemaking, while the latter has resulted in negotiators increasingly focus the attention on the regulatory aspects affecting trade uh, as opposed to the traditional market access approach. Uh, despite that, the cost of trade is still significantly higher uh, for services than in goods. So studies have shown that domestic regulation reforms could reduce trade costs uh, by 7% for APEC economies. Uh, so in short, uh, you know, I would say you know, we have come a long way, but there is still a long road ahead of us. You know, the WTO GSI for services domestic regulation uh, will be a huge milestone in this journey. Um, and it's very heartening to hear the G20 Trade Minister's statement yesterday mentioned the support, uh, and of course your update as well. Um, so I want to start my first question uh, for you, if, uh, Jaime, that you mentioned that the GSI has a support of 65 WTO members uh, covering 90% of the world's trade services. Um, are you happy with this number or are you getting more member economies in agreement uh, than any kind of specific region you're targeting? Well, thank you. Thank you for this question. Well, I, I believe that the, this number, 90% uh, uh, of the world's trading services, represent true global reach, nevertheless, the group uh, is firmly committed to use the remaining time before the MC12 to convince uh, more members uh, for, of the benefits of joining this initiative. Uh, the initiative um, would like to get on board at least most, if not all, of the leading 50 services traders. And among those are several from the AP region, like Philippines, Malaysia, uh, and Vietnam. And I think uh, most of these countries, uh, as, as you have mentioned, should be able to join. They have undertaken broad uh, regulatory reforms to make the domestic environment more conducive to business activities, and they already agree to regulatory obligations equivalent to the disciplines developed by the joint initiative in the recent trade agreements. Uh, so, and in addition, uh, as I highlighted in my presentation, let me emphasize that the initiative's uh, reference paper is drafted in a, a very flexible manner. And in order to, uh, and this is uh, in order to allow uh, spaces for differences in regulatory capacities and approaches, and there's also flexibilities to assist developing countries in case they face challenges with the implementation. So I think um, it's not that, that, that we are, um, uh, um, I mean, we have, we have a, a, a good number, 90%, but we are looking forward to, 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 to bring on board uh, more uh, uh, countries. Uh, Indeed, indeed, Jaime. So uh, I'm aware of the time as well. So maybe I'll just follow up with, with one further question for you. As we know, you know, developed or high income uh, members tend to have greater compliance with the GSI disciplines already. Uh, and, and of course, earlier you mentioned in your presentation that developing country members, particularly LDCs, will enjoy more flexibility with the agreement. So that would give them some form of assurance. Uh, but could you share how you know, domestic regulatory reform uh, can have a greater potential for developing countries or lower to middle income member economies, uh, which may feel that their services companies may not uh, be as uh, efficient or as capable or with as much capital as uh, those as their counterparts in developed uh, members. Well, um, uh, we all know, and, and this, I think this is what has been uh, a long 
uh, an idea that has been allowed all, all this uh, event uh, that the, how uh, very important is for business operations that the requirements and procedures are clear, straightforward, and readable, readily accessible. I come uh, myself from a developing country. And for small co economies like us, it is even more crucial to implement domestic reforms to enhance the transparency and predictability of laws and regulations uh, and to make the system more effective. Uh, because if you want to track investors and suppliers from abroad, you have to signal that your domestic environment is ready to host them and to make their life as easy as possible to conduct their business. Um, but we also know that trade is more and more about services uh, and services today are critical to all economic activities. They generate more than two thirds of economic output, attract over two thirds of foreign direct investment and provide uh, most jobs globally particularly for developing countries, improving the quality of domestic services regulations is key uh, to reducing cost of trading and reaping, reaping the full benefits of services uh, liberalization. Right, thank you so much, Jaime, for, for your very insightful answers and of course for driving this very important agreement uh, forward at the WTO and keeping the business community engaged all the while uh, in this.